Well, hi. Let's talk about linear dependence of vectors, a very interesting subject. Again, one poorly understood by students, but nonetheless very interesting and easy to understand if you just follow it in simple steps, as I'll show you in a moment. Let's get going. Now, we need a definition of linear dependence. So, we can say that a set of uh, vectors is said to be linearly dependent if one of the vectors in the set can be expressed as a linear combination of the others in the set. Okay, now, <laughs> what does that mean? Look, don't worry, I'll show you. Now, we're going to, actually, we're going to explore two separate cases, and that is two vector sets and three vector sets. Okay, and they're, they're a little bit different in the way it all works out. For two vector sets, we know, if, if they are linearly dependent, guys, this looks a bit gobbledygookish, but don't worry. Look, u is just parallel or a scalar multiple of v. If u and v are the two vectors, okay, one is basically a direct multiple of the other. In other words, it's parallel to it. It can be, it can be pointing the other way if k is negative. It doesn't matter as long as they're pointing parallel to each other. Or another way of expressing that is if that you put this... Uh, this right hand side over to the left hand side and reorient, uh, rejig it a bit, you can get two different constants k1 of times u plus k2 times v comes to zero. But k1 and k2 are not allowed to be both zero in and of themselves, otherwise, it makes the whole thing a complete nonsense. In fact, if k1 and k2 are both zero, they are linearly independent, as we'll discover. Now, if, as I was saying, guys, if uh, u is not equal to kv, or if k1 times u plus k2 v, k2 times v equals zero only if k1 and k2 are zero, yes, they are linearly independent. Now, for the three vector sets, it's the same, the same basic principle, except you're dealing with three vectors. So you can say that u is equal to alpha v plus beta w, where the three vectors we're talking about are u, v, and w, or, of course, you can rewrite that in similarly to the way we did above for the two vector set as a times u plus b times v plus c times w is equal to zero, and a and b and c, of course, aren't allowed to be zero, um, otherwise we have the same situation as we had above. So if they're not equal um, as we said in the in the line above, and if that expression comes to zero, a times u plus b times v plus c times w is zero only if a, b, and c are all zero. Yes, they're linearly independent. Now I think it's time for a little bit of uh, real life examples here before we all go off the planet with all this <laughs> algebraic stuff. Two vector sets. Here we go. Ah, a real life example. How marvelous. So u, in this case, is i plus j minus 2k, and v is 3i plus 3j minus 6k. Now look, cast your eye over those two vectors and tell me what do you see? What is remarkable about those two vectors? What would you like to remark on? Yes, you can see that. We can say that u is one-third of v. It's exactly one-third of v. So what I'm pointing you to is that this little thingy up here applies in this situation where k is a third. Yes? Now you're beginning to see it, aren't you? And, yeah, u is a scalar multiple of v. Yes, and they are parallel. And they need to be parallel if there's only a two-vector set and they are linearly dependent. We can also say that if we re, uh, reorganise this uh, expression here, we could say that 3u minus v equals 0, which is this kind of expression up here, right? 3u, where k1 is 3, and k2 would be minus 1 in that instance. So 3u minus v equals 0 is the other equation, which also points to the fact that these are uh, linearly dependent sets. Thus, for two vector sets, if the vectors are parallel, then those two uh, equations apply and they are linearly dependent. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, not too hard at all. Um, students just seem to just don't quite get it. I, I suppose it might be the way it's explained to them, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it's easy to get, isn't it, when you see it this way? So, 
U is a... Oh, this is one where they're not going to be linearly dependent. I'm warning you right away. Now, you watch. That's U. Now, look at V. Now, if you just have a quick glance of those, you'll see. Look at this. They are not parallel. They are not parallel, guys, because, look, you've got an I here. You've got a minus 3I there. So that's minus 3 times this one. All right? Now, each of those J's and the K's have to have the same corresponding ratio between their terms if they're going to be parallel to each other and therefore linearly dependent. Now, okay, the J is fine. That's minus 3, that's 1. So there's a K of minus 3, a, a multiplication scale factor of minus 3 to get from U to V in both the I and the J's. But look at the K's. Look, minus 2 plus 8. So that's a scale factor of minus 4, not minus 3. So those guys, I can tell you straight away, they're not parallel and they are not, uh, one is not a scale multiple of the other, as you can see from what I've just written there, and that doesn't apply. 3u plus v does not equal naught. You can try it if you like, it doesn't. Therefore, they're not, not linearly dependent, and therefore they are linearly independent. Okay? Good show. Uh, here's case B for you and me. This is three vector sets. Now, this is where it gets a bit more interesting, but the same principle applies exactly. So I'll give you a set of three vectors, and we're going to work out if they are linearly dependent. Now that's just the stuff that we had on the previous page, okay, defining the whole thing. Let's look, look at a real life example now. There's U, it's 10i plus 3j plus 2k, and what's V? Minus i plus 3j plus 4k. Now, in order for us to ter determine whether they're linearly dependent, have a look at this. Feast your eyes on this. Oh, sorry, there's W, hello, W. Now, if they're linearly dependent, we know, we would know. Now, I'm just writing those vectors in columns, okay, as if they were matrices, but no, 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 they're not matrices. They're just vectors written in columns without the I, J, K format, right, but same thing. So what I'm saying is that, okay, I'm saying that the U, which is 10I plus 3J plus 2K, is going to be equal to alpha times v, which is minus i plus 3j plus 4k, plus beta times 4i minus j minus 2k. Do you get that? Now, what we've got to do, guys, you'll notice something very intriguing, is we're going to solve this for alpha and beta, but the problem we've got here, oh, I'll just write out the equations that you get. Now, just follow along. I've swapped the right-hand side and the left-hand side but that's all right. There's still the same three equations are going to come out as you can see in those vector in that vector equation, right? That's the that's this one here is for the i's, this one here is for the j's, and this one that third one there there is for the k's, okay? But you'll see that we have three equations and two unknowns, right? So there's too much information we we only need two equations for two unknowns. So what we do is this. Yes, that's right. We know that that's a problem, but we're well, not really a problem. But So what you do to solve it is you firstly solve one and two, or two of them, for alpha and beta, and then what you do is you, secondly, you test that solution for alpha and beta in the, in the other equation, and if they are linearly dependent, you'll get consistent answers. If they're linearly independent, you will not get consistent answers, and therefore all bets are off they're not linearly dependent. Right? Consistent answers, yes, linearly dependent, and inconsistent answers, no, they are not linearly dependent, they're independent, the little beasts. Right? Let's go for it. Solving 1 and 2, okay? For me and you, woohoo. And we've got minus alpha plus 4 beta equals 10, and, and 3 alpha minus beta equals 3, just re-expressing what we've put in the on the left-hand side there, just there. Okay, now, let's. what are we going to do? Well, I think we should multiply equation 1 by 3, and then add. That'll get rid of the alphas very nicely, yes? So let's do it. There's uh, equation 1 re-expressed uh, times by 3, and I've called it 1a. Now, we're going to add 1a and 2, as I foreshadowed, and what do we get? Mm, very nice. 11b is 33. Goodness me, it fills us with glee, and b is 3. Huh. Now we'll substitute that into number 2, 
and we'll see what alpha comes out to be. That's 3 alpha minus 3, beta, beta being 3, so the 3 alpha minus 3 equals 3, therefore 3 alpha will be 6, and alpha will be 2. Now, what we've got to do now is sub those two values for alpha and beta in the third equation. And if the right-hand side equals the left-hand side after we've substituted them in, then we're in business. They're linearly dependent, all right? That's what you do. So let's see. The third equation, left-hand side, comes to be 4 alpha minus 2 beta, which would be 4 times 2 minus 2 times 3, which would be 2. Now, what about the right-hand side? Oh, <laughs> goodness, it is equal to the right-hand side. Therefore, no problem. They're, they can join the linear dependent club. Yes, they're linearly dependent, all right. Wow, isn't that great? Well, so there you go. That's what you do. That's how you solve the three vector ones. Now, of course, you can also do this on your CAS handheld device, and I have written a special little routine which just tests them if you happen to be in the technology-enabled exam. If you've got a TI ha handheld, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, right, where are we going? Oh, yeah, this example here is where they're not going to be linearly dependent. In fact, they're independent. It's almost identical to the previous one. I've just changed one of the figures, I think, one of the coefficients. But we'll go through the motions and I'll show you how that you get wrong answers. Same equation, same format. Well, not exactly the same equation, almost the same equations. So let's put them as, uh, there's the I's, the top rows, there's the J's, the middle row, and there's the K's, the third row. Now, same um, procedure, we're solving it for 1 and 2 for alpha and beta, and we're going to multiply the first equation by 3 as we did before, and there it is, there it is, now we're going to, um, oh that's equation 2 with it, and we're going to add them to get rid of the alphas. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So what's that? Uh, 11b equals 33 for, <laughs> for you and me, of course. And b is, beta is 3. Yeah, good. That's what we got before, wasn't it? Yeah, we put that into equation 2 just to get alpha, and alpha is going to be the same thing as we got before, isn't it? Alpha equals 2. Now, but now, but here, here on in, it's different. We're going to plug those alpha and beta numbers into the third equation, and you look what happens. The left-hand side would be 4 alpha minus 8 beta, yeah, that was the 8, the 8 was the thing I changed. So there it goes, and it's going to be minus 16. Mm, but that ain't equal to the right-hand side, guys. Oh, no. So look, that those vectors are an imposter set of vectors. They're not linearly dependent at all. The left-hand side doesn't equal the right-hand side, and they are not, not linearly dependent. They are independent. Do you get it? It's pretty easy really, isn't it? And look, do you like this little trick of writing these things out in a column way? Because you can see very easily what you're doing. I don't like the IJK notation for this particular process. I think this is much clearer and easier to see what you're doing. But if you want to use the IJK format, that's fine. You, you go right ahead. I just like this way better for me. Hopefully for you too. Uh, if it helps. All right, now this last question here, um, this is an interesting question. We've got the vectors A equals three minus 3i three plus 2j plus 3k, B is minus 4i minus 4j plus 2k, and C is mi plus no j plus nk. And m and n are non-zero real constants. So we've got to find m in terms of n if... A, B, and C are linearly dependent vectors. Well, this is a pretty interesting question. Pro numerals all over the place. You watch what happens here. Now, if you don't know what to do, guys, you just start because the, because the path becomes clearer. As you walk down it, you will see the light. And it'll be very bright before too long. So there's, um, yeah, that's the statement of linearly, linear dependence, isn't it? Yes, right? A can be expressed as linear combinations of B and C. So doing it in the column way, that's what that would mean, wouldn't it? Yeah? Now, let's write out the equations from that. That's the first equation with the i's. Second equation with the j's. Oh, that's a nice one. I like the look of that one. And here's the k's. Yes? Good show. Now, what would you do if you were <laughs> sitting in the exam with that thing? You know, I think uh, the three... Well, first of all, look, guys. What I'm noticing is there's an alpha, a beta an M and an N. So there's 
four unknowns and there's three equations. So the, the thing that you've got to realize is it's impossible. It is impossible to solve for all those four pronumerals uh, in terms of um, you know actual values because we, we don't have enough equations. So you're going to end up with one in terms of the other. It's inevitable, okay? That's the first thing to realize, which makes me think that's what this M in terms of N business is probably all about, probably. Um, right, that's the first observation. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, if I was solving these three equations, I would leap on equation two with tremendous zeal, and I would get that value for alpha, which is obviously minus a half, and I'd plug it into the other two equations with post haste. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Three equations, four unknowns. A, B, M, and N, you can't solve them completely for all of the four variables. No, you can't. Well, in terms of, you know, giving them an actual value, that is. Now, right, from equation two, yes, as I foreshadowed, alpha is minus a half, and we're going to sub that into one and three, which will make our life very much happier uh, very quickly. There's equation one, so therefore, instead of um, minus four alpha, I've got plus two. Yes, because alpha is minus a half, so plus 2 plus m beta equals minus 3. And what does that mean? Hmm. It means that m times beta equals minus 5. Yeah, good. And doing the same thing, same process for equation 3, 2 times alpha would be minus 1, because alpha is minus a half, so minus 1 plus n b beta equals 3 and same thing there so I'm gonna get what am I gonna get n times beta equals 4 now look so having a little break a little pause go back to the question what are we supposed to be doing here uh, find m in terms of n well see you've got three two equations three unknowns so see the odd man the odd man out there look is this beta so look I've just I've just formulated an action plan at this point in the question, after just following my nose for a while, see, look, if I if I if I um, substitute, find out, I make beta the subject of this little equation, it'll be minus five over m, and then plug it in there. It's minus five over m. The betas will be blissfully gone, and I'll just have m and n to fight it out with each other, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so from equation one a, beta is minus five over m. Yes, it is. Substitute that into 3a, and hey, hey, today we're nearly finished. Yeah, n equals minus 5 over m, or n times minus 5 over m, because minus 5 over m was beta, equals minus 4. Now look, guys, I'm a happy, happy chappy, because I've got this where I want it now. I can easily get m in terms of n. It's just a matter of a couple of algebra uh, steps away from victory. Now... I've just, uh, what have I done there? Oh, I've just divided by minus 5, both sides. Now I can cross multiply, and I can get that. Now, I want to get M, I've just got to divide both sides by minus 4, and it is beautiful, isn't it? That's the answer. M is minus 5 over 4 times N, thank you, Mr. Box. And that is the answer to the puzzle. Now, come on, that wasn't really all that hard at all. So... I hope that linear dependence is now your friend and not your enemy. <laughs> because he's not your enemy. He's really easy to do, okay? Um, so now you know what it is, how it works, how to do it, and all's good. And thank you for listening, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye.